Natalie Sidesurf here of Sidesurf Cake Studio, and I'm gonna show you how I made an armadillo cake. This cake is made for a wedding rehearsal dinner, and I have a feeling that it is meant to reference steel magnolias. That's my good piece of ass. Classic. And yes, the cake is red velvet. I'm gonna show you some simple texture techniques that I use to create this shell texture. So I actually used a pen, you could use straws. I'm really into using whatever I have laying around the house uh, because you can food safe it, so it's perfect. So let's get started. Let's start this cake off with some modeling chocolate. I am getting the basic shape of the armadillo's face right here. Uh, it's got like a very thin face, a very tapered nose. And then I go in and I add some more details. There's kind of like a little wrinkle on his nose. He's got that um, like hard helmet style uh, top of his head. I think that's to protect his dome. And I'm just gonna go in and start sculpting the eyeball, work my way down. And I'm just adding texture with sculpting tools. And you can't forget the nostrils. You just kind of stab in the chocolate, wiggle it around a little bit, and shape the nose. So here I want to show you that, here's a, a, some modeling chocolate, and I have a very, very clean pen. Uh, I cleaned it very thoroughly. And you can see the lines and marks I'm making. Now if I grab some plastic wrap, I can go in with the same pen cap, and it's kind of going to soften those marks. So you're getting a very different texture when you use the plastic wrap versus not using the plastic wrap. Very cool, right? So I think that the texture on the right looks much more like the armadillo shell. So I'm gonna go with that route. So I just place the plastic wrap right on top or you can wrap it around the pen cap. And I thought the pen cap had the perfect size circle for the size cake I had. So I went with that instead of maybe a straw, or something else that you would find that had a circle shape. So now I'm just gonna do the other side of the face. I always say once you have one side of the face done, it's much faster to do the other side because all I'm doing is copying and matching you know, the opposite. I like to make the head out of chocolate because it's pretty tiny. So if I make it out of cake, you could, but it's basically like one bite. So it's kind of like, might as well just use some chocolate and as long as the customer or whoever I'm making the cake for is fine with that, um, which they are 99% of the time, then you might as well just make it out of chocolate. Now, if this was a giant armadillo, I would definitely make the head out of cake. So for the ears, this is just a, a chunk of modeling chocolate. Um, you don't want it to be too thin or the ears will fall and fold over. So you gotta give it a little bit of a thickness at the base of the ear and then taper the ear as it goes up. So here I have a cake board and some buttercream. I use cream cheese icing for this. And I have some red velvet cake, of course. So I put the red velvet down, layer of buttercream, red velvet layer down, layer of buttercream. Now I'm going to carve the cake. This is not very complicated. And I feel like I say that every time I carve a cake, but I swear, just keep it simple. <laughs> it's just rounding out the edges. You know, think of an armadillo shell. Really, it's just kind of a little bit tapered at the ends, but just, just a round shape. It's just a big oval. You don't wanna put all these details into the cake portion because there's gonna be that outside layer of modeling chocolate and that's where we're gonna add our details. So there's really no need to get crazy detailed when you're sculpting cake. Here I'm going to cover the entire thing in some buttercream, and then I pop that in the fridge to let it cool before I cover it in a layer of modeling chocolate. So here's my modeling chocolate, it's also light brown. I just roll it down on some parchment so I can pick the parchment right up, place it right on top of the cake, and then I smooth out all that chocolate. Modeling chocolate smooths out really well, so I just have this kind of like scraper deal that I push up against it. So I'm just kind of tweaking where the head's gonna go. I wanna have a defined shell shape. So that's what I'm doing with the sculpting tool. Now 
Now that we have the basic shape of the shell, I'm adding little marks that I'm gonna use as a guide to create those kind of, I guess they're like little ribs in the back. They're these long lines. And they're about right in the center of the shell. So you just take your sculpting tool and you just carve out those, those lines. You don't wanna go too deep or you're gonna poke through to the cake, but you also gotta be deep enough that it creates a texture that you can see in paint. So here you can see I have this kind of pointed tool. You wouldn't have to necessarily have this exact tool, but something that has a bit of a point to it. And that is gonna save me some time, because now instead of sculpting all these little marks out by hand, maybe with a pointed tool, I can just push right into the chocolate and it creates these awesome triangles that look super similar to an armadillo shell. So now I'm gonna attach the head. I put some chocolate down. That is going to fill in the gap between the head and the shell, creating his neck. So it's just all out of chocolate. And I'm just defining the shell a little more. I want it to look like the head is coming out from under the shell. His arms are just all modeling chocolate. Again, why make it out of cake? It is so small. So you might as well just take a chunk of chocolate and uh, sculpt the arms out of that. Okay, so now I have the back end of a pen. So I took the little end off of the pen so it's hollow, and that was a really good size for the shell. So I go in and I add these larger circles, and then I take my little tiny pen cap hole, and I fill in the spaces with the tiny circles. And if you look at an armadillo shell, you will see that there are tiny circles and then these larger circles, which I did not realize until I made this. <laughs> Tails similar to the arms. Um, just a chunk of chocolate. And it looks like I'm flying through this. It actually takes some time to add all this texture. <laughs> now to paint it, I used black to start. And what I'm doing here is I just wanna get a bunch of black color on there so that it soaks into all those little marks I made. So the texture is really gonna pop. Then you can take a wet paper towel and start to wipe some of that color off. So it's only gonna pick up color on the raised areas, so it's kinda like highlighting it. For the face, I used mostly black, brown, and a little bit of red, because he had some pink in his face. So I definitely wanted to in include the pink, but he's mostly browns and grays. The white was added around the outside of the shell, like at the bottom area of the shell, and then through his back, it's actually pretty black. And I'm just looking at pictures of armadillos. That's how I know. So I'm just adding a few highlights, a few little pink areas, making sure the whole thing is covered nice and grayish brown. And there you have it, an armadillo cake. He's red velvet, he looks realistic, and I really think you guys should try this out. It's very fun.